You can't trust anyone. Lock your doors. Hide your children. Put the drugs you're smuggling as far up your butthole as you possibly can. No one is to be trusted. Now, it's a well-known fact that Google's watching our every move through the webcams on our computers and stuff. Probably because they're part of the Illuminati and they want to eventually sell us as slaves to the New World Order, which operates on a flat Earth. But I'm not going to get into any of those facts today. Today is something far more pressing, far more important, and something that you actually have full control over that none of you know anything about. You're fools to believe whatever you see online. When you Google things, you expect the truth to pop up? Well, why is it that when you look up flat earth theory, the first thing that pops up is why the earth is not flat? They're clearly hiding something from us. And today, at least at the time of recording this video, a very influential political figure has pointed out one of these heinous acts that Google themselves have done to pull the blind over the eyes of the American people. For this, I have to say many thanks, Eric Trump. You absolute legend for probably finding this all on your own. He is proving that Google is once again trying to manipulate Americans. If you type mob into Google, go look what comes up. And then look what shows up on other search engines. You see, if you look up mob on Yahoo, you'll see a mob. If you look up mob on DuckDuckGo, you will also see a mob. If you look mob up on Bing, you will also see a mob. But Google, pathetic, trying to sway the minds and hearts of our people. If you look up Mob, you find the anime character Mob from the anime Mob Psycho 100. And Eric Trump has finally caught Google on this secret. Because as he knows, if someone wants to Google Mob, they want to see the chaos that a mob truly is. But Google is hiding this fact by showing you something anime. Something to lull you into a false sense of security that yes, this is... Here's what they all talk about when they talk about mobs taking over cities. Anime, fiction, something fake, deplorable. Now, I don't mean to adorn the tinfoil condom right now, but hear me out for a second, because things are about to get nuts to butts insane. What if the reason Google showed Mob Psycho, it's because Google is the browser used by a younger generation who uses Bing, Yahoo, or DuckDuckGo. Boomers! Unless it's the default browser and whatever the hell device the boomers have, in which case that's probably what they're gonna be using for the rest of their lives. But that said and done, who looks up mobs to to see mobs. Well, who wants to see an image of people fighting in the streets? People that look up mob are probably looking up mob psycho even more often than they're looking up the actual mob bosses. Now, I was extremely happy to see this because I have an excuse to now say you should probably definitely, absolutely, possibly go watch Mob Psycho 100 because it's a fantastic show. Art style may look weird, but it's an emotional masterpiece. The animation is freaking awesome, but most importantly, Stan Reagan. Trump and Biden can both go cum guzzle somewhere else. Hashtag Reagan 2020. We need this to trend, people. Not only to annoy and flex on poor Eric Trump, <laughs> became a laughing stock of the internet for a day. But because this con man swindler dude from Mob Psycho 100 unironically has better leadership material than either of these two dullards that are actually running for the position of most powerful man in the world. Now, in the tweet that I tweet out when I post this video, I will have the hashtag Reagan2020. And I do think it's prudent for that to be retweeted and also to reply with hashtag Reagan2020 or to tweet in your own tweets, hashtag Reagan2020. I want this to trend people for the sake of Eric Trump. Guys, please. But more importantly, I wanted to talk about something that I find fascinating, even though in all honesty, this is probably one of my favorite memes I have ever seen in my entire life. The fact that actual politicians go ahead and tweet out, bro, Google censoring us. When you type mob in, you see this, this, this cartoon. I don't understand. Let's fire a third nuke at Japan. All right, maybe that was getting too dark too quickly. But Eric Trump right there, damn nearly pulled the Joseph Joe star and said, I'll never forgive the Japanese. I'll never forgive the Japanese. And it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my entire life. But I wanted to take this moment to say, while Eric Trump potentially was one of the funniest people on the internet that lovely day, he brightened up the entire Twitter space and the 
level of bamboozled that this man was was glorious to see. I don't know what it is about the Trump family and tweeting things the second they hear them. It's kind of hilarious. But a discussion that actually I think needs to be had is this whole idea of confirmation bias. That is a psychological term used in regards to people that believe something and therefore since they believe it, they see it everywhere. And you see that everywhere. You have flat earthers that made documentaries about how the earth is flat and they accidentally proved with their own theorem that the earth was round. You ready for the big flex? They said, oh, we must have made a mistake somewhere. Along our calculations, the earth is in fact flat. That is confirmation bias. They were so sure the earth was flat, even when they accidentally proved it was round. Nah, fam, they must have made a mistake in their calculation somewhere. Confirmation bias is something that a lot of people hate, a lot of people detest, a lot of people actually, unfortunately, can't see themselves doing, and I find it hilarious. As the number one stan of confirmation bias here, I am proud to say that I am incorporating it into my lovely series, Laughing at Toxicity, because it's more than just a series of YouTube videos. No, Laughing at Toxicity is a lifestyle choice, and it's one that we definitely promote on this wholesome channel. If we find toxicity anywhere, blam, we'll destroy it. Well, and by destroy it, I mean laugh at it, and sometimes destroy it if, if I feel like it. <laughs> Very ironclad rules to this series, as you can see. Confirmation bias is something I've always found fascinating, and I always loved laughing at people that were so blind based on their own ideals that they'll say the most cockamamie, hair-brained logic you'll ever hear of in order for it to somehow still make sense according to their train of thought. People are willing to make thousands of logical leaps before willing to admit the one thing that they believe in is in fact wrong. Now, the reason why I used flat earthers as an example is because I have had the good fortune to have actually met a real-life flat Arthur. He is currently hung up in a museum. Okay, fine. No, I'm kidding. He's still in the wild. We were unable to capture him. He was far too powerful. And being that he believed the Earth is flat, he is willing to make a million logical steps that make absolutely no sense whatsoever just to remain steadfast in his belief of a flat Earth. Because if the Earth is flat, well, then that means there's no space. There's a dome on top of the flat Earth. So if there's no space, then how are there astronauts? How is there a moon landing? Well, you see, no, that was all in fact faked. Wait a second, so all of the people that worked in NASA or with Elon Musk or with any of these things, it was all just one big bamboozle. Okay, what about airline pilots? Airline pilots that fly planes high enough can actually in fact see the curvature of the Earth. Oh, no, no, that's all a lie too. Oh, okay, so the government is making a massive conspiracy hiding the fact that the Earth is flat. Everyone working in NASA is in on it. Every airline pilot it is in on it. Why? Why do they want to bamboozle the planet into thinking that it's in fact flat? Well, you see, because if they can convince everyone it's flat, then it's, it's a form of mind control. Now you can only think according to their every whim. And you know what? Someone who believes the Earth is flat will sooner say that every airline pilot, NASA worker, and government official is working together in this massive conspiracy theory to pull the wool over the eyes of every person on the planet for absolutely no no reason whatsoever. They would rather say that than say, well, you know, maybe the Earth is not, in fact, flat. That's confirmation bias. That's something I love to laugh at because it's so sad at how frequent it is. Obviously, flat Earth is an extreme example, but you see, on the Trump side of the force, one of the ongoing memes is fake news. It's the idea of mainstream media and different massive corporations that are hiding information from the public in order to mind control the masses and get them to think according to their every whim and desire. Now, as harebrained as that sounds, it's been proven correct a billion times. I mean, I wouldn't trust anything that it says on CNN, and I wouldn't trust anything that it says on Fox News. I think that if you're listening to any right-wing news source, they're hiding the truth about the good things the left does. And if you listen to any left-wing news source, they're gonna be hiding the truth about any good thing the right-wing people have done. I'm not taking political sides. I'm just saying that fake news is everywhere. But what's funny is, once it becomes indoctrinated into the mind of someone that every news media and social media outlet is secretly out to get them by controlling everyone's minds, you're gonna look up Mob on Google and see Mob Psycho, an anime that's extremely popular, and be like, oh my god, it's a massive conspiracy to contort the minds of the people. And that is why confirmation bias is absolutely hilarious to laugh at. That's why it is positively astoundingly funny that Eric Trump tweeted something like this. But 
but I wanted to make a video on this for three reasons. The first is, yo, the meme that a politician is blaming Google for a mob because of an anime. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. This is the pickle Rick of 2020 right here. <laughs> Get over it. I can't get over how funny that is. The second reason why I wanted to make this video is because it's in a good excuse to tell you guys to watch Mob Psycho. It's a masterpiece. Also, Stan Reagan, hashtag Reagan2020 on Twitter. Let it trend. Eric Twump is going to have nightmares all the way to his boners when he sees hashtag Hisoka2020. I mean, frick, what am I saying? <laughs> hashtag Reagan2020. I mean, Hisoka is a lovely uh, presidential candidate, but I don't know if he's exactly the ideal social role model. I mean, diddling kids has not been approved yet as far as as I know. And uh, speaking of confirmation bias, The New Yorker had an official article about cuties. You know that Netflix show that was basically sexualizing children as their thumbnail to get some pedophiles to click on their movie? Yeah? Well, they say that cuties became a target of a right-wing campaign. Right-wing campaign? Is the implication that left-wing people are like totally okay with kid diddling? Well, in that case, hashtag Hisoka 2020. And hashtag Reagan 2020. That's the battle of the century we always wanted. Trump and Biden. <laughs> I spit on the pathetic. I want to see a debate between Hisoka and Reagan as to why they are the perfect candidates to become the president of the United States. I just find the whole election meme fantastic, being that Trump is probably the most polarizing political leader since Robespierre. <laughs> You know, the guy in France that, like, decapitated the heads of the previous kings and they caught him and decapitated him? Yeah, since Robespierre, I think Trump is probably the most controversial figure around. And the people that vote for Biden, it's like, well, I don't really like Biden, but at least he's not Trump. <laughs> Come on! It's like we're watching a freaking soap opera, but it's reality. This is honestly more far-fetched than Reagan versus Hisoka. You love to freaking see it. And the third reason why I wanted to make this video is just because I wanted to point out this confirmation bias that really is everywhere. If you look for it, you will see it. And why it's completely hilarious as well as so stupid. So I thought this was a very important, prominent video to make in today's landscape as to why you can't trust Google. You can't trust anybody. The only thing you can trust is what you personally believe in. And if someone tries to convince you out of what you think, much better to throw a tantrum and call them a dumbass than actually think about what they have to say. Hell yes. Someone else convincing me that I was wrong? Ha! <laughs> I laugh at thee. That was the basic points I wanted to make in this video. Now, I could make many more tangents, but maybe I'll leave them for future occasions because debating is a topic I'm very interested in and debates have pretty much become a lot of this. A lot of trying to win the argument, but not trying to change anyone's opinion because no one's opinion ever changes when it comes to debating in 2020. Definitely subscribe for future content unless you're a smooth brain and aren't willing to accept the facts that I'm spitting because I'm gonna meme on everyone. This channel is no political affiliation except for the toxic side of the force. I will laugh at toxicity no matter who they are, no matter what caves they crawl out of. And you don't want to miss it. Smash like, subscribe, because at 2 million subscribers, we're going to be summoning Satan. It's an amazing milestone special only for true chads. Prove your chadliness by hitting the subscribe button now. All right, that was enough shilling for my taste. Have yourselves a most wonderful evening. Try not to trust yourself too much because unlikely as it is, you might potentially be wrong about something if you ever get other information that challenges it hashtag reagan 2020 link to my twitter in the description stay weird fam